Hello everyone! So in the last video I showed you how to build a web scraper by building a Node.js application in which we scraped a website and got the data showing up in our terminal. But how do we get that data showing up in our browser? Or in other words, how do we get the data from here showing up here so that we can use it in our front ends? Well, we're going to do this using a package called Express that we installed in the last video. For those of you who are new to joining us, please feel free to watch part one in the description below before watching further or simply join us where we left off. I will be doing a brief recap of what we have coded so far. Coming up next. In part one, we imported the packages Axios and Cheerio in order to scrape the website guardian.com. We did this by passing through the URL into Axios and once the response came back to us, we got the response data and used Cheerio to pick out certain HTML elements to create an object. So this object right here and pushed it into our articles array that we then console logged out. The result of the console log showed up in our terminal as we are currently working in the backend. It is also important to note that this code will only run if I start the script, which I have written here. Okay, so to start this script, all I'm going to do is write npm run start, just like so. This script relies on a package called nodemon that essentially listens out any changes we make on port 8000. And as you will see here in the terminal, these are the results of our website scrape. Okay, so that is a very quick recap of what we did for anyone new joining us here. If you would like a more in-depth explanation of the packages and what is happening, please do watch part one. Otherwise, let's carry on. So I'm just going to close that and go back to our index.js file. Now, this video is going to focus heavily on express and routing. The word routing refers to how an application's endpoints, or in other words, this right here, respond to client requests. So for example, if my client, or in other words, my computer, makes a GET request to this URL right here, I can make it return something back to me. And I can do this thanks to Express. Here is the structure that you will see while routing. So app a method, a path, and a handler. As we mentioned in the last video, app is what holds all of our express wonderfulness and comes with great things such as app listen, app get, or app post. App on this occasion is also referred to as an instance of express. The method that you see here refers to an HTTP request method. If you know about APIs and how to use RESTful APIs, you will know that the most popular types of requests are the GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE requests. We are going to use the GET request, so I'm going to replace this with GET, or let's just write it out here, GET, we're going to use the GET request to get data from a certain resource or path. We use the post request to add data to a certain path or resource. And we use the put request to edit data from a certain resource. Okay, so edit, add data, get data. And of course, we use the delete method to delete data from a certain resource. Okay, so all of these come with express. We are getting them from here. Just going to delete that for now. Next, we have the path. This refers to the path on the server. We will in fact be defining this ourselves later on. And finally, we have the handler, which is essentially a callback function that gets executed when we visit this path. Okay, so say my path was localhost 8000 forward slash progress and I visited this in the browser, the function here, whatever I write, will be executed. Okay, so we will be doing this later. Okay, 
So great, hopefully that makes sense. Now we have the template of how to do basic routing in Express. So let's try it out ourselves. Let's start off small and simply decide that if I visit localhost 8000, it must be 8000 as that is what we defined as our port in the back end here, then I want the words, this is my web scraper to show up. So I would do so like so. I'm gonna use this template, so app, and then the method I wanna use is the get method. The path, well, we have just set it, it's localhost 8000, or we can actually just do this for the home page. That will be the same. And then we need the handler. So we know that the handler is a function, so let's write function, that is my function. And what happens in my function? Well, I just want to show hello world. So for this, I'm actually gonna pass through a request and response, just like so. This is being added by WebStorm as a helper. I have essentially just passed through the parameters request, the comma and response. And if I get the response and use JSON, I can then pass through a string. So this is my web scraper. And this is what the response will be when I visit my localhost 8000 page. So let's check it out. I'm gonna to gravitate to the browser localhost 8000, there we go. This is my web scraper. So if I go back here, let's change this just to be Ania, click save, refresh, and there we go. So we are now getting strings show up when we visit localhost 8000. Once again, I'm just gonna switch this back. There we go. Okay, so this is the response, hence I've used response and not request. It's the response that I want to show as this is my web script. Great, so now that we have a basic understanding of how to show text in the browser from our back end, let's get to showing our scraped results. So let's keep that as it is. I'm gonna keep that there for you so you remember the structure. How would you think that we would show the results at a different endpoint? Well, once again, I would use app, I would get a method, so this time it's a get request because we are not adding data, we're not editing data, we're not deleting data, we are literally getting data, we want to get data when we visit a certain endpoint, and I'm going to pass through the endpoint of this time, let's go with results, okay, so we've got our path, we've got a method, we need the handler, so the handler is just a function, I could use a arrow function if I wish, it is totally up to you. And this time, well, I simply want to show the results. So instead of console logging out articles, I can actually move this entire thing. So I'm gonna just cut this, I'm gonna put the whole thing in here. So at the moment, this is console logging out articles. We don't wanna console log anymore, we wanna show this in our browser. So again, I need to pass through the request and the response, it must be in that order. And I'm gonna use response JSON and pass through the articles. So we don't need this anymore. And now if we visit the endpoint results, we should see all the articles. So let's go ahead here and I'm just gonna do forward slash results. And there we go. That is how you will get data from your backend, or in other words, server showing up in your browser. Now, this is useful for many reasons, one being that you can now make requests to it from a front end that you have built, and use the data to build out projects. Or two, you can deploy this onto the internet and have other uses for your data. Think along the lines of building a RESTful API. If you wanna learn how to use a RESTful API, please watch my video on this in the description below. Otherwise, let's carry on and I will show you how to get the data that we have here into a front end. So for this, I'm simply going to create a, another file. Here is my server. On the same directory, I'm gonna create a new directory called source, just to keep it separate from my backend. And in here, I'm gonna create a new file called a app.js file, where we're gonna build out our front end. And I'm also gonna create a styles 
CSS file in the source directory too. Next, I'm going to create an index.html file in the root of my project, so index.html like so. And in here, I'm just going to put in some boilerplate HTML. Okay, so here we have some boilerplate HTML. All I need to now do is link the style sheet to our style sheet. So I'm going to go into the source directory and I'm going to get the style CSS file. And I'm also going to link up this script. So once again, I'm going into the source directory and getting my app.js file. Okay, so that is really it. All of my HTML is going to go here. I'm not going to make this super complicated. I'm just going to have a simple div that I'm going to give the ID of feed so that we can put all our data in here. Okay, great. So now if I go into my app.js file, let's pick out the feed. So I'm going to use this with the document query selector. This is a JavaScript method that will allow us to pick out elements based on their ID. So I'm going to search for the ID. For IDs, I need a hash. And then I'm picking out the feed. So once again, this is going into my HTML file and picking out the element with the ID of feed. The hash is for feed. And then let's save this as something. I'm going to call this as feed display, just like so. You can, of course, use get element by ID instead. I have just chosen to go with query selector on this occasion. Great. So now I'm going to have to get the data from our backend, or in other words, localhost 8000 forward slash results into my front end. So I'm going to do so with some asynchronous JavaScript. So to do this, I'm going to use the fetch API. I can use the fetch API easily with JavaScript, and this is the syntax for doing so. The fetch API essentially provides a JavaScript interface for accessing and manipulating parts of the HTT pipeline, such as requests and responses. And the general syntax looks like this. So I'm going to now get the URL that I want to fetch data from and replace it with this one right here. And then this is chaining that we talked about earlier. If you haven't used chaining before, then please do watch a tutorial on this in my asynchronous JavaScript series. What essentially is happening is we are fetching the results, so the JSON from our results page that we just created, and once that returns, then we get the response and we resolve this promise that comes with that. And once that returns, so our promise is resolved, then we do the next step and then we do the next step. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at that. I'm just going to save this and I'm going to open up this page in our browser. So open in browser Chrome and inspect the page. You will see this message show up. Access to fetch our backend has been blocked by the cause policy. So now we need to fix this. This is an easy fix. For this, all you need is the cause package in your backend. So go ahead and gravitate to your backend right here and then simply run npm i for install cause. Cause is a Node.js package providing a Connect Express middleware that can be used to enable cause with various options. It is a message that you might come across quite often as a developer, so if you ever see this, just know that it's easy to solve by installing this package right here. And once that has downloaded, all we're gonna do is use the package in our backend. So I'm gonna simply do const cause require cause and then using app use again this is something that express comes with i'm going to pass through calls and call it just like so great so now if we look in our browser there is our array full of objects we are getting our data from the back end in our front end amazing so we are nearly there here is of course all of our data there we go now let's go back to our front end so now we need to focus on how to get the data from the console log area into actual elements that display on our browser. Well, to do this, this is simple. Instead of console logging the data, I'm going to open this out just like so. And then because we know this is an array, I'm going to use the for each method on the data coming back to us. So I'm going to grab the data and use for each. 
And for each of the items in our array, which I'm going to choose to call article, you can call this whatever you wish. Well, I'm going to define a title. So const title and using this syntax, I'm actually going to create elements. So let's create an H3 tag. And then I need to get the title from my articles. So let's have a look at the response again. It looks like this. So it's each article's title that I need to put in here. So I'm just going to put the word article in front of here. I'm grabbing each item from my array and each item is an object and that object has a title. So this is how we would grab the title and put it in an H3 tag. Next, I'm going to actually have to inject this into the div that we gave the ID of feed. So we have to find this as feed display on the first line of our code. So I'm just going to use feed display and use the insert adjacent HTML JavaScript method to put in the title into that div. I want to put it before the end. So I'm just simply going to pass through the string before end and then the title like so. So the title we just created. And let's refresh. And wonderful, we are seeing all the titles of all our articles showing up in the browser. So hopefully you get how to do this. Uh, I'm just going to show you how I would do it if I wanted to put the URL in as well. So I would do this by changing title. Let's maybe change this to article item. And then instead of just passing through the h3 tag, I'm actually going to wrap the h3 tag in a div, just like so. And I'm going to put through a p tag for paragraph. And I'm going to also put the article URL that is returning back to me as part of the object. OK, so I'm going to put through a article title and h3 tags and the article URL in between p tags. I'm going to wrap it in a div. And that is essentially what I am saying is my article item that I am then putting into the feed display using the JavaScript method of insert adjacent HTML. The insert adjacent HTML method of the element interface passes the specific text as HTML or XML and inserts the results nodes into the DOM tree at a specific position. OK, so we are essentially getting this and turning it into HTML so we can put it into our HTML file. And once again, the before end simply means that we are putting it in after its last child. And what does this look like? Ta-da! So this is what it looks like. We are getting all the data showing up here. Of course, if you want to style this out, please do grab the H3 tag and grab the P tag and style them up using your style sheet. I, however, I'm happy with how this is. Once again, this is not a styling tutorial. This is one for learning how to get data from your back end to your front end. Okay, wonderful.